Hello my friends, William Poloniak here again at Whole Health Foundation and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of fixes for your Norwalk juicer when the piston does not go down all the way on your hydraulic reservoir. Now this is a spare hydraulic reservoir that I have. You do not need to remove this from your juicer to do what I'm going to show you. Now usually when your piston does not go down all the way it's usually a result of these two o-rings the small one that's in the top and the bottom one that's in the bottom of the hydraulic piston so the first thing you do is you remove all of the six bolts as I'm doing here and then you remove the top. And you just push your thumb down on the piston to remove it. And in the top you'll notice three O-rings. There's two, one here that the um, piston chamber fits on, the outer O-ring for the top, and there's a small one inside now, I use a dental pick that my dentist gave me, a used dental pick, to get the old O-ring out. On a few rare occasions, I've had to have my machine shop um, cut some metal off about two or three thousandths of an inch on this groove to make the O-ring fit properly. That's a pretty rare fix, but sometimes that's what's necessary. Many times, just replacing this small O-ring will help solve the problem. So you basically just put it in there, back in the groove, as I'm doing here. You want to remember to add a little bit of oil with your finger before you put that together. The other problem O-ring is at the bottom of the piston. This o-ring often gets swollen and when that happens the piston will not go down all the way. So you can use a dental pick or you can take a safety pin and put a bend in it to get this out. Remove that o-ring as I'm doing here. Take your new o-ring put it back on. And that, in most cases, will solve the problem. Remember to oil it a little bit. Now we're going to take the chamber out, leave the piston in. Now, sometimes the spring is very difficult to get out, but you can pry it out with a screwdriver by putting a screwdriver in and going down to the next coil and prying it out as I just did here. And this will reveal the spring. Now this spring looks pretty good to me. It's probably still functional. To replace the spring you're going to need a channel lock pliers or some way to pry this spring back in so that it goes into one of these holes in the top. And you have to be very careful because you don't want to scratch the inside of that chamber. There we go. This is easy this time. It's not always this easy. So the small end goes at the bottom. The dog leg is at the top. And we're going to put the top back on. And you want to seat the top of the um, piston chamber in that inner groove. And if that O-ring drops out, just put a drop of oil in there so there's enough surface tension to hold it. But let's see if we're going to get lucky. And yes, we are. So, twist it until the small ring goes past the piston, as I'm doing here, and then replace the six bolts. Now I'm not going to tighten all those now because this is just a spare part. 
I hope you found what I've shown you instructive. And if you want to contact me, my phone number is 760-753-0321. My email address is developtrust at cox.net. And my web page is www.wholehealthfound.com. I hope you like what you've seen. If you do, please tell a friend, and I'll see you in the next video.